Yo, what's going on, Planet S1 family? It's your main man, JD. Thank you for tuning in. This is Drinks with JD. All right, my main man, Sham Black. What's up, my brother? What's up, brother? How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good, yeah. I'm good. Thank you so much for being here on Drinks with JD. I appreciate you. Talk shit. Um, let's uh, introduce you to the Planet S.O. and audience. Okay, boom. Uh, can you uh, please let them know um, who you are, where you're from, and what you do? My name is Sham Black. I'm from the Spooky Gang, and I'm an entrepreneur slash rapper. I'm from San Diego. I'm okay, spooky. no doubt, no doubt. Okay, okay. All right, my brother, so um, you know how right now you just mentioned you're from San Diego. Um, let's uh, get to know you a little bit. You know, let's, let's take it back a little bit. For sure, know? for sure. Um, where, where specifically in San Diego are you from? I'm from the west side, man. Okay. Uh, Logan Elementary, Memorial Junior High. Oh, wow. San Diego High School, straight like that. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so you, you grew up in Logan? Yeah, I grew up in Logan. Okay. Ripping and running all, all up and down the Orange Line. Yeah. Uh, all that. All How that. was that for you growing up? Uh, you know, it was a little unique for sure. Yeah. Because I, I grew up skateboarding. Okay. Yeah, so, you know... Um, it's a little bit of a culture clash. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for How sure. so? How so? Because, you know, um, at the time, black people were skateboarding, but it really wasn't as accepted, I guess you could say. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, going, growing up over there in uh, Logan, it's the coast. There's a lot of Crips and shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is not what they did. Of they course. didn't skateboard. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so me skateboarding, you know, I, it, it made me the odd person out of a lot of the situations, a lot of the groups I found myself in. No, no, no. And uh, music was one of the things, was one of the ways I was able to, you know, stay grounded, stay focused, and have like some kind of dreams and ambitions to do. Okay, okay But okay. also skateboarding, you know, skateboarding kept me like weird, I guess you could say. Okay, okay, so yeah. um, let's say as far as skateboarding, like when when did you pick that up? Man, I started skateboarding. Ooh, these are some good questions. I started skateboarding in, what? I was in the sixth grade, so. Okay. I said like 2000, maybe 1999, 2000. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my homeboy Marche, I was on a candy van. I was on a candy van with this dude named Bird. He used to take us around and sell candy and stuff like that. So yeah. I, that's how I started on this. I started skateboarding with them and stuff like that, you know? Wait, so candy van, right? Yeah, was that candy like, van. you know, I'm not gonna lie, man. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Let's get into it. I, uh, that was actually one of my first jobs. You know, I was like yeah. 13 and like, yeah. and uh, they were called, uh, Kids in Progress or Kids in like Progress, that. yeah. Oh, that was you too? No, okay. no, no. We was M&I Youth. Oh, okay, okay. So I, I still know my whole speech. So I look you dead in the eye and be like, yeah. hello. Yeah. My name is Shamron. Yeah. I'm M&I Youth. M&I stands for Every Minority American. Okay, Needs okay. an opportunity now. There you I'm go. I'm with my friends. <laughs> yeah. Trying to uh, make my way to Magic Mountain. Yeah. I'm selling these candies here. These candies are seven dollars. Yeah. The reason why they're so expensive were because they were expensive, right? Yeah. yeah. No, they wasn't. They would give them like two dollars. Oh, oh. Okay. We buy from the nice store, like no cap, bro. Yeah. We would, we would no, sell. forgive me. You, we would sell them. We would that. sell yeah. them. I yeah. sell them for seven dollars. So yeah. I'd be like, uh, the reason why I cost so much is because yeah. um, I get three dollars for coming out here, mm -hmm. and four dollars goes toward the trip. Mm. I know the money might sound like a lot, but the money isn't coming out your pocket. It's coming mm. from your heart. And that was your spiel. And, and that's how you get them. You'd be like, oh, I got to help the kids. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, no, we don't eat chocolate or no. I'm like, yeah. well, uh, do you mind sponsoring a child by giving a $5 donation? Yeah. Uh, like I said, I know the money might sound like a lot, but yeah. the money is coming out your pockets, coming from your heart. No doubt. And, bro, they would just give me their money, bro. Okay, fair and, enough, and, fair and, enough. <laughs> <laughs> and no, but I totally feel you. I totally and straight feel you. like that, bro, that's how yeah. I was able, you know, growing up in Logan. Yeah. Is that's how I was able to separate myself from a lot of the bullshit. Yes. And say a lot of the nonsense, a lot of the people that really didn't want much out of nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of people going in the wrong direction and you know they really wasn't being constructive with their time bro uh -huh. i was doing that you know what i'm saying now yeah, obviously, respect to you now i feel you because it's yeah. like uh it's like you adjusted to uh your environment definitely man pretty, definitely awesome um and, but it came with exposure too you know uh my partners had exposed me to that okay you know what i'm saying now also being in that environment came yeah. with a, its own environment mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying which you had to navigate that as well you know yeah, what i mean yeah. and growing up with my dad and being from Logan and, and growing up in Logan, you know, yeah. I was already used to just being the outcast. You know, I was yeah. used to just being my own. You feel me? Okay, just okay. my own. I feel you. Just I feel you. In that entirety. And so when I got on the candy van, it was the same yeah. thing. So I started smoking weed and shit, but I was still okay, okay. on my own, even though I'm around all these people in this van. Yeah. You know, going up to. Um, so just Orange different County. places, yeah. yeah. We go up to like Mission Viejo. Yes, or yes, I remember just that. I remember all that. the suburban areas of San Diego, you know, really getting this candy off and, yeah. and hustling. And um, even that, you know, people would be trying to get me to do this. And I just was like, nah, man, I'm going to smoke weed, skateboard, yeah. 
Chill. But still, yeah, at least at least you try to get yours. You know what I'm saying? Get yeah. your hustle on. I oh. definitely got my hustle on, and I think like I had I always been an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. I, I gave you that story. Skateboarding was when I was like um, 12 or yeah. Uh, yeah, 12, 13 when I was in the sixth grade. You know, yeah. but even before that. You know, my dad is a hustler. No, no. You know, my dad never got involved. In you time. know what? How about this? Let me let me I guess interrupt you right there. Forgive yeah, me for for, for interrupting. Sure. But let's let's say this. If you don't if you don't mind me asking, um, I know that right now you just uh, mentioned how you're from San Diego, right? Yeah. Well, um, where where are your parents from? My parents from San Diego. Oh wow! And yeah, they, they were born and raised here as well. Born and raised in San Diego. Oh, man. that's cool. I, I actually grew up in my mom's, um, in my mom's stepfather's house. Mm -hmm. That's where I wow. grew up. Wow, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. And also in Logan as well? In Logan, I stayed off of 30th and Clay Street. Wow, okay, okay. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, can you uh, speak on how your father's, I guess, ambition also broke off on you? Well, you know, I watched my dad struggle for like a long part of my life. You know, he's an old school, he's a recovering addict, okay. number one. Um, he overweight, you know. So, um, yeah, man, we was up against the tides, yeah. you know what I mean? We was up against the tides for sure. My mom and my dad split up when I was six. Okay. You know, they got divorced and stuff like that. I got an older brother and a younger sister. So, you know, watching my dad, which watching what he did, I understood, like, you know, he paying the bills for sure. Yeah. But he was just always, always struggling. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? He was just always working, bro. And uh, seeing that, you know, I've got, you got to stay busy, bro. So that's what I ended up doing, you know? Yeah. Getting money, bro. No, uh, no, no. My dad used to breed pit bulls. You okay, know, my okay. dad used to breed pit bulls and fight him and stuff like that, bro. And so, boom, the puppies that he didn't want, that he wasn't going to sell, psh, I'm selling them to the homies for $25. Okay, okay. That's you what I'm talking me? about, yeah. That's what, and that's, boom. Hustling. Yeah, uh, I'm washing the neighbor's cars for $25. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm out here getting to the money, you that's know. That's what I'm talking about. My dad, was a, my dad was a pimp, too, at the time. Okay, okay. You know, before he before he really fell off with the drugs. Yeah. And, uh, boom, he had the prostitutes at the house, and I'm over there trying to hustle them for five ten dollars to go to the ice cream truck no doubt no doubt you know and just that environment that you saw regardless it, it helped shape you and also uh it also gave you a drive you know a drive to do better as well so yeah yeah, yeah. it definitely respect. gave me a drive it definitely gave me something like you know no i doubt. was just around a lot of game man like you know what i'm saying i was around a lot of people that understood what i was going to be up against later on in my life you okay, know what i'm saying no so doubt. they respect, was always respect. trying to shed light on to the important shit, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. What's important, man? What's, it, what's important is taking care of your family, that's right. taking care of your responsibilities, you know what I'm saying? And staying true to your word and stuff that's like right, that, you know? Right. What, what's, what's not important is following this dude because mm -hmm. he cool or he got some influence over you and, you know what I'm saying, fucking off the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What's, no, I what's, what's especially, not right. Especially in what, like, environments where, like, we're talking about, like, let's say uh, for Logan or something like that where some people uh, or some, ch some, some children could fear off in the wrong direction, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, it's cool it that real, you were able it, to go it, ahead and, and stay on the right path. And, ch and, and also I mean, chase what you want to chase. Yeah, I stayed yeah. On, on a path. No doubt, no doubt. It wasn't the right path. But hey, you're at least doing but your yeah, thing I right now. But yeah, I stayed on a path yeah. that didn't take me too far off because, I mean, you know, I, I got, you know, there's associates, friends, family members, or all sure. those sorts that did that and go in, go in those directions, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm no, a bug no, I, I, no, no, like no, that. I don't think you're coming off like yeah. that. I just but, think, uh, you know, yeah. um, I didn't fall victim to a lot of that stuff, you know, because I, I, I talk about it in one of my songs called Cycles, yeah. about falling victim to a scam. And what I'm talking about basically is, um, you know, people will try to convince you that something is what is not. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's the cycle. That's the scam. If you see it's not working, yeah. you know, why would we continue down that path? That's the cycle. The mm -hmm. scam is that you're going to win. That's you know, right. how many, how many, how many um, gang members or, or drug lords you know that's famous, popular, still outside living a free life? Fair enough. Fair enough. Zero, bro. No doubt, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Every single movie, the fucking the villain, bad guy dies, the, right? the cool villain, you yeah. know what I'm saying? The nigga yeah. dies, bro. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? He's dead. Yeah. They kill him. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. no different, bro. Nipsey Hussle, yeah. um, Tupac, Biggie. I mean, well, how about this? How about this? Um, I know that uh, you, have, <laughs> you have you have some amazing tracks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I guess let, let's take it back a little bit. Okay. You know what I'm let's let's uh let's take it back to where your your, your interest in music first started. How about okay. let's take it all the way back? You know what I'm saying? Before we dive in, because I really want to get into the music. Yeah. But I guess uh let's 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 keep getting to know you a little bit. You okay. Know what I'm saying? So okay. um, so when did your interest in music start? Uh. Shit, my interest in music started when I was like in the third grade, man. I used to rap with my cousins yeah. on, on like little cassettes and shit like that, you know? We used to uh, try to be like Bone Thugs and Harmony because okay, that was okay. a popular group at the time. Okay, okay. 
you know, um, they had just, I think it was like the song with Easy I want to say, maybe uh -huh. it was like 1996, 97, maybe it's give or take. Okay. But yeah, man, we used to try to rap like Bone Thugs, you know, and that's where I remember like the, me first really getting comfortable with yeah. rapping and, and just being a participant of music, you know. I mean, <laughs> I got a funny ass story, yeah. fool. Me and my sister had this cassette tape okay. at my mom's house when my mom and dad got divorced, right? Mm -hmm. And every time a song that we liked came on the radio, she had one side of the tape, I had another side of the yeah, tape. Yeah, yeah. We would flip the tape over and record. Okay, oh wow. So you yeah. imagine doing this like, you know, it's an even amount of times because it's two sides. So imagine yes. just like 10 times, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's probably about five songs on each side. Yes. But what was happening was she would record on one side, yeah. And then I would rewind it and record on the other side. Yeah. Then she would rewind it and record on the other side. Yes. Then I would rewind it because we keep, we not pressing fast forward. We just flipping the tape. Yes, yes, Continuously, yes. bro. So it ended up being like a tape just full of the beginning and the end. Of oh, all okay. <laughs> it was all these. overlap and stuff. Yeah, it wasn't one single yeah. whole song, bro. It was just yeah. like 10, 15 seconds, yeah. maybe three seconds of a song. And That's it was the man. whole tape, bro. It was funny, fool. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, but you know. But when you were so when you were young, that's when overall you just uh, yeah man you started with your cousins. I really in, yeah in the group. yeah okay okay. I mean now I'm thinking about it, bro. Even further back than that, my brother had a when my dad and my mom got divorced. My my dad and my mom got divorced, bro. Yeah. My brother had wrote the lyrics to a Boys to Men song yes. out for a girl. Yeah. And I remember finding the letter and reading it, and I remember that that I could I was not reading. I was like singing it because mm -hmm. it was a oh, song. Okay. You know, yeah. it was the lyrics to a song. And bro, and I think like that was something that probably like mentally shifted the the writing of songs and yes, like yes. seeing the songs. Cause okay. like after that, yeah, the the see, the mixtape thing, and then after that, I was like in the third or fourth grade, and I was rapping into the boombox, finding ways to like record over CDs that my dad had yeah. bought. And uh, yeah, man, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's say this: since you uh, since you acknowledged um, that you know, what you were reading were lyrics, right? Um, did that also inspire you to like, let's say, write some lyrics down, also even get into poetry? Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say that exactly. I've always been a strong writer. I've always okay. been a strong reader too. Yes. Since I was in the third grade, man, they had moved me up to the fifth grade because I could read real well. Yeah, you oh know? wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I was a really, really, really strong reader. Yeah. And um, so I've always been, you know, good with writing. I used to write like little novels in school, in elementary school. Yes. You know, on a computer, you know, I would like put my own graphics. It was a computer, uh, it was like on a computer with word munchers and Oregon Trail yeah. and, you know, all these math games and stuff. Yeah, man. So I was always a strong writer and I think that, you know, just telling stories and, and articulating myself and finding ways to express myself and translate things. Oh yeah, and overall we can hear that in, in your music as well. Yeah. All right, man. So right now you mentioned how you know you were also introduced to like boys to men yeah. um, at a at a younger age. Now I, I'm pretty sure you were also exposed to different genres in music, right? For sure. Um, but when did you know that you fell in love with the hip hop genre? You know what? Uh, I'm gonna tell you the truth, bro. Okay. I always love music. I love all music, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But. Um, and, I, and saying I fell in love with hip-hop would be taken away from that. Okay, fair Because, like, I really didn't even... I listened to rap, like I said. I started off trying to rap like Bone Thugs, but then I went through this... When I started skateboarding, I didn't even listen to rap music. That's yeah. how weird shit oh, got, wow. you know? Okay. I started... I went to... I had got bust out in the sixth grade to um, Persian. Okay. Which is, like, a feeder school in the... Um, like in North County? Is that North no, no, County? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's in East County. It's, okay. out about, it's out there in Grossmont. Okay. But it's a feeder school in the Patrick Henry. Okay. You know, so when I when I came from out there, like I was skateboarding and shit, it was more acceptable for the black kids to skateboard. You know, it was an all white school. But I was bad though. Okay. So um I got kicked out of school. Yeah. I got kicked out of school and I had to go to this alternative learning behavior school. It was called Alba. Okay. And I met this and I met my best friend, he's a pastor now. Yeah. You know, that's who I originally started rapping with. His name is uh his name was profane, but it's Louis mm. now. And that's when I fell in love with actually writing raps. Yeah. Because I was writing raps in class, and one of the teachers, you know, she was a black lady. I was, mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm at this badass school with mm -hmm. all these badass kids. Because yeah. <laughs> I've been fighting in school, you know. Fair enough. And I got kicked out, and so, you know, I had to go to this other school. The teacher takes my notebook, 
and reads out what I was rapping about. Oh, wow. Now, okay. my brother's an older rapper, too. Okay. My brother's a rapper, and so kind of like a little bit of influence from him. But this is when I fell in love with it, mm -hmm. though. You feel me? Yeah. And uh, she busted out to all the kids. It's, oh, uh, it's, I have try to like write. I'm the philosophical type. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you spell, you think you're the philosophical type. Oh, wow. Yeah. You can't even spell philosophical right. Wow. And everybody started laughing, you know, everybody trying to roast me and shit wow, like wow. that. Yeah. But then my homie Louie, he came up to me and said, oh, you write raps? I'm like, yeah, he's like, I rap too. I'm like, oh, that's tight. So then we ended up later on in life becoming like a little rap group yeah. and doing some stuff later on in life. But uh, yeah, that was the time I, f that was when I really like, okay, I, I really like this because I'm that's expressing myself and I'm really getting out what I need to say, what I want to say the way I want to say Fair it. Fair enough. Right? Okay, yeah. okay. Respect, respect. Now, um, earlier you spoke about, let's say, Nipsey Hussle. Before I interrupted you, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to uh, <laughs> get too far into that because I wanted, I guess, to, to know, know about it here. Um, what artists have influenced you and what what people have uh inspired you and 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 helped you mold your sound and music well my sound my sound is very um i have a, i have a very wide palette man you yes know yes yeah, yeah. i listen to a lot of music okay. music that you probably would never listen to bro you know i listen to a lot of music so it's really hard to like say my sound yeah you know what i'm saying because yeah. my sound is like I don't want to say like a chameleon, but yeah. it's just. Well, what, what were the artists that inspired it? Uh, like overall, the artist, that is, the artist that I would kind of like, if I had to relate Sham Black the artist to yeah. any other artist, you know, just any person, bro. You know what I'm saying my influence is like Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle, okay. um, Mo Three, um, you know, uh, Snoop, yeah, Master P, excuse me. Hold on. Uh, P Diddy, you know, yeah. Outkast. No, and I could totally hear. It. I could yeah. totally hear all those artists in, in your sound. You know, um, right UGK. Yeah. You know, Scarface. You know, I I, I guess you would say it's kind of like like a like a late '90s kind of yeah. influence. You know, it's, it's real. I mean, it's it's like not too thuggish, but it's you know, it's ghetto stories yeah. of um of achievements. You know, it's like ghetto gospel in a sense, if you would. I mean. You know, if you listen to what I'm talking about, you know, yeah, I'm telling stories about overcoming shit, you mm -hmm. know, but I'm also telling stories of just overcoming yourself, you know, because that's the only person, that's the only person you're up against oh, in this life, you. you know what I'm saying? Right, it's not, right. again, it's not like you like versus, internal yeah, struggle. bro, it's just yeah. the internal fight to be better and do better, yes. and I feel like, you know, everybody that, um, I feel like everybody that can contribute to society, mm -hmm has started by fixing themselves. That's right, that's you know right. The man in the mirror, right? Yeah, like Michael Jackson mirror, said, yeah. you know, I'm talking to the man in the mirror, bro, yeah. and that's where a lot of it comes from. So when I look at my influences, it's people that's standing up for something. And, you know what I'm saying? Speaking and not just out here, you know, spreading no, um, no spreading I disease and spreading nonsense, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I totally, like, bro, I totally, I respect that, man. That's right. And I totally hear it yeah. in your music. Well, I guess uh, this brings me to this, this question that I really wanted to ask you. Okay. All right, man. So one thing that uh, I love about your music is that um, you continuously show us how intelligent you are. You kind of remind me of a, of a Nas or a Common, you know, and I love how you even um, use uh, metaphors for like math acronyms like um, PEMDAS. And also um, you even refer to or you break down some laws in, uh, in the book 48 Laws of Power, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, with the knowledge that you carry and that you learn from, let's say, that book, right, do you think that helped you maneuver in, like, business and also your, your music career? Well, my music career is just getting started. Okay. But, yes, I do think it, I think it's just, you know, it's information. Yeah. You know, information is vital, man. Information is powerful, you know. And um, believe it or not, everybody playing by these laws. Yes. Whether you want to believe it. it as actually bad if you don't believe it because you're right. going to be more at fault you know yes. you're going to be more susceptible or you're going to be more um it's going to be easier to hold these against you than somebody that is more familiar with it yes like, oh this dude this dude's trying to play me but it's not a bad thing yeah. you, know, you know what i'm saying and it's, just, it's just tools to help you bro overall. it's navigation bro yeah. it's a delicate dance you know what i'm saying yes. life is a delicate dance you know it's never very, outshine the master yeah right? man, never <laughs> outshine overall, the master you know what i'm saying yeah. but it's it's a great dance to do you know yes. what i mean and it's fun when you do it the right way it's, exactly and it's great and it, it's a nice game yeah and it yeah. leaves both parties satisfied you know you right. get something and then this person gets something and you understand that 
you know, you got to give in sometimes to be able to get, you know. That's right. It's a philosophy quote that says, um, in order to withdraw, you must make deposits. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's the 48 laws of power to me, bro. That's right. That's right. You know, I yeah. say, um, I start off, like you said, one, never outshine the man. Yeah. Big wave in the water, I'm a title, man. That's right, that's right. You know, that's right. two, understand your man. Just because you're friends with them don't mean you're friends with them. That's right, that's Why? right. Why? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's how it works, bro. No, no. You know, no, I, hey, no, I respect it. And I love, yeah, I love yeah. how uh, you overall show us um, what you're into. Like you just said earlier, how you know you like to read, yeah. And uh, and the way you write, you know, the way you just put that all together. I mean, it just, um, I love it how you 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 basically everything that you read, you make it shine through your lyrics yeah, and that's yeah. pretty dope that's pretty well dope, you bro. know like i said man i'm not out here just talking about some nonsense no yeah that's what i'm saying everything you know saying just all, rhyming I, it I, all I makes think, sense i think it's good you know some people are good at just rhyming yeah but i think the better ones are good at rhyming and saying something too. Yes. And, you know it's good positive music um it's lifestyle music for sure mm -hmm. um when i make even when i make music bro when i make songs and i rap and shit like that yeah. or i'm constructing you know, it's anthony. You know, yeah. this is a part of my life. My life yeah. is a movie. You know, this is going to be the song that plays during this chapter. That's right. That's right. You know, and um, I think it make you know, cause you break it down, man. The chapters throughout the day, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got to hope my life is a whole reel. Yeah. You know. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. And, okay. and it keep it, it keep it interesting too. Um, and then Pim Das, yeah, Pim Das yeah. Went, is breaking down the math. You yeah, know? that's pretty dope. How you uh, you know, obviously multiplied, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So that's pretty dope, man. But, that's um, a, but it's problem solving, you know, sure. and that's what you do through life, bro. You problem solve, you know. Exactly. You gotta um I can't remember the I think it's like eight eight problem steps, problem solving steps. I used to be in the military. Oh, okay. So um part of the NCO Creed when you go to the um NCO Academy, yeah. you know, to um to P and E five, I think it's called NCO Academy. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, uh, let me touch on that topic. Um, yeah. What what branch were you in? I was in the army. Oh, okay. How long? How many years did you serve? I was in the army for ten years. That's amazing. Yeah, okay. man. Yeah, I was I was Air Force for ten years. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look it. That's amazing. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Hey, get pretty deep, bro. But yeah. you know, now it makes more sense though because the people that I have met yeah. that have been in the service. Yeah took it a little bit more serious little, yeah, little than bit. the homies <laughs> that was just here like oh i rap bro yeah. it's like oh you rap but like do you want to go get money rapping right, or do you just right. want to like sit here and like hobby it up that's right and pulling into here bro i'm like okay this ain't the average interview bro yeah. i'm feeling you do you feel me i'm like cuz no that my brother you know no, what i'm saying no, okay, respect. Okay, respect yeah, to my yeah. fellow NCO. respect <laughs> yeah. to my fellow yeah. NCO. You know what I'm saying? No I was not commissioned officer for show, so yeah. you know the way that even I'm explaining myself now, it's kind of like you know I'm building this army with me, bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And if you want motivation, if you want to be led, you're gonna listen to Shan Black, and for you're sure. gonna be led, bro. I mean, because, it makes sense overall. Yeah. Overall, like yeah, you just no, mentioned, we're no, fucking I, going to the promised land, yeah. dog. That's I believe facts, it. Bro. I believe it. I believe That's it. That's the fucking facts. And where is the promised land? I cannot tell you. Yeah. But we're going to get there. But when we find it, <laughs> yeah. we're going to fucking know, like, hey, y'all, this is it. You no know doubt. what I'm saying? And it's going to be me that's going to be fucking at the front of that spearhead with no that doubt. fucking, you know what I mean? You know what? Um, let, me, let me take it back a little bit. Um, you know how we were just talking about books, right? And also yeah. you were mentioning Nipsey Hussle as well. Yeah. Um, one one book that has helped me out that I would like to just recommend to you. Um, you probably have already read it, but if you haven't, you know, just... Uh, you should really take a look at it. It's called Contagious. Contagious, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, have, you, have you read yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I read it. Oh, okay, okay. That's something, that's something that really helped me out. I just at least wanted to also mention it uh, for also the viewers because even, let's say, something as, because this show is called Drinks with JD, mm -hmm. right? And uh, just to create that title, I even got it from uh, just from uh, principles in that book. You know what I'm saying? And also, I that book was recommended to uh or from nipsey hustle to yep, his fans yeah and yep. that's why i read it because i was also a nip, a nip yeah. fan but uh, yeah i just i guess i just wanted to touch on that but yeah, yeah. but since you read it hey hopefully everybody else reads it right yeah i read <laughs> yeah, it no i doubt, need no to doubt. go back and reread it for yeah. sure though no doubt because no uh doubt. some books i read and i studied okay you know what i'm saying and i'm like and they know, I'm, that's, that's i'm a going good to book apply too. this motherfucking shit no, sure. and some books i read while i was like maybe in transition i yeah. read while i was just trying to read yeah you know saying i didn't really get a chance to absorb everything from the book that I, yeah. you know what I mean? Like some other books that I have. No, yeah, and that's part of the process. Re -read, you know? Yeah, to that's part of the stuff. journey, bro. Yeah. You know, they say if you want to, if you want to test your knowledge on something, you should be mm -hmm. teaching it. 
For sure. For you know sure. what I mean? Because okay. that just that just boom reinforces your understanding and your points and shit. But fair enough, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, Contagious is one of those books for sure. All right, my brother. So I want to dive into the business side, right? But before we start that, um, I want to just mention something that I heard about you when I was a. Uh, I guess uh, preparing for this interview, um, one of my cousins told me that uh, you like to surf. Can you I just be talk doing, about I, it? Hey, look, I do white boy shit for sure. Man. Okay, I okay. do white people shit, bro. <laughs> you know, it's fun, man. I like to do hood bad shit with my friends and shit, snowboard, <laughs> all that, bro. But uh, uh, for surfing, man, so I came back from the army. Mm -hmm. I got out the army. I got out at uh, Fort Campbell. Okay. Came home, you know, and I was just getting readjusted. Mm -hmm. You know, now I served uh, four tours overseas, three to Afghanistan, one to Iraq. No doubt. You know, combat tours. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, coming home from that, after 10 years of being away from San Diego, mm -hmm. you know, just a lot of the, the stigmas that I had, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, the stuff that I knew then, mm -hmm. It's still similar, you know what I mean? But I mean, if anything, you more out of touch, mm -hmm. you know? And if you kind of, you know, we live in San Diego, man, shit is fast here, bro. Yes, yes. Like, you gotta be hip and thinking, That's and right. using your fucking brain. That's right. And so, you know, I came home and I was all fucked up. Yeah. So I started seeking therapy and shit, bro. Yes, yes. And part of therapy was just like going to the water. Yes. You know what I mean? Going to the beach and totally going to surf, bro, you know? And that's one thing about like surfing, I was always scared of the water. I mean, I could swim real good because yeah. I joined a swim team when I was younger just to go be able to go to the pool. And we're San Diego boys. You know, you know I, mean? I, I mean, love to swim. You know, so like I'm hey, always at the beach, yeah. Well, my mom told me that. She was like, we learned how to swim because one thing we wasn't going to do was drown. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I almost drowned like twice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. You know, so, yeah, I learned how to swim. Man, I learned how to swim at the Memorial Rec pool mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I never surfed, bro, because I was scared of the ocean, because yeah. the ocean is strong. But it's know? cool that you were at least able to get into it as an adult. Yeah, so yeah. that was one place. I, I think that's even better, right? Yeah, that was yeah. one of the places where, I mean, even as a kid. But now, see, I'm about to set you up for what I'm about to tell you. Okay. Because going out there as an adult and really feeling that freedom, you know what I'm saying, and liberation and, and just, you know, accepting the earth as is. That's mm -hmm. like the one place you can be motionless. That's right. And still move. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You could really find some solitude in yeah. that. So it's more like therapeutic and, yeah, and man. you but learn about yourself Also, well. surfing, man, surfing is about balance, you know? Yes. Now, I still can't get up all the way up and fucking like yeah. surf, surf. Okay. But man, I could, you know, I'm working on it, bro. No, I'm working no, no, on it. It's not okay. going to come over a day or okay. overnight. How, so um, also, so the reason why I even mentioned that, right, yeah. is because, um, well, first of all, like you, you just mentioned that as well uh, right now, but in your music, you call yourself the big wave, right? The big wave. And also, um, well, let's get into the business side, right? Okay. Can you uh, let us know what Wave in the Tide is? So Wave in the Tide is my yes. clothing company. Okay. And it's also going to be my uh, nonprofit foundation where we take kids from the inner city yeah. and expose them to, um, you know, shoreline recreation, you know? That's amazing. Take them out there and, you know, how many kids you know been on a jet ski? Yes. You know, and how right, many kids right. you know even come out here on a on a on a mental health day mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying to come out here and just enjoy the beach you know that's right and um, get them away from the environment that yeah, they might well, they might be yeah you know i'm i'm a firm believer of what you say you know yeah. using what you say to affirm things you know mm -hmm. and if you say you barely see the beach then you know you barely see the beach but yeah. i think we live in this city in san diego bro and people pay to come here to vacation you yes know? that's right we need to see the beach more we need that's to that's right Take advantage of all this shit, bro. But and not just like, stay within our vicinity, within our within our couple blocks that we uh, that we live in. Yeah, man, because yeah. it's gonna be real hard to grow. You know, um, life is about exposure. That's right. And if you never expose, I mean, imagine a little kid that can use this information at a younger age. That's you right. Know, not when they're thirty or when they're twenty-five. You That's know. That's right. They could really help them out and mold them into yeah a more mature adult. Mm -hmm. yeah, but then also, saying. you know. When I was out there surfing and stuff, you know, yeah. obviously it was with the Wounded Warrior Project. Yes, no doubt. Um, big salute to them because they give back and they do what they can. You know, of they course, do what they yeah, can shout for out sure. Shout to, to the Wounded Warrior. Yeah, no you doubt. know, they do what they can. Some people got some bad stories about them, but, you know, I think they do what they can. Yes. And they're a fair organization. You know, they give you an opportunity as far That's as I'm true. concerned. That's true. That's and, true. Uh, when I was out there, man, I noticed it wasn't no black people. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? It just was zero black people. And I was like, okay, yeah. we need well, also, representation here Yeah, too. also, yeah. I mean, like you, know? you were mentioning how, you know, certain things that we aren't exposed to as far yeah. as, to say, minorities. Um, 
And that's unfortunate because we're from San Diego. We from here. You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't we all just go together? Because we ain't exposed to exactly. it. Exactly. You know? And uh, we yeah. ain't exposed I totally to understand. it. And that leads to the business side. So. Yeah. My organization is called Waves in the Tide, no doubt. you know, and uh, our motto is uh, push the wave, you know, yeah. and we're pushing positivity. That's what I'm talking about. We're pushing individuality, yeah. you know. And hey, we'll you're the big wave. Yeah, right? and I'm the big wave. There I'm going to be the first one to do it, you know. I'm going to lead by example by That's just being my about. total self, bro, you know, um, not trying to chase no cloud, not yeah. trying to chase no fame. You know, not trying to chase the money, but just doing it out of pure love. Yeah. Now, do we want to get paid for it? Of course we want course, to get paid for yeah. it. But we're not doing it for the money. You Purely know? for that, We're yeah. not going to be no puppet. You're not going to toss us a check and then try to tell us to dance when you want to dance. Yeah. Nah, bro. Like, we're not about to do all that. No, no, no. We'll respect you know? my brother. Yeah, respect. yeah. Okay. We're going to be the way. We're going to be the big way. I feel you, my brother. Okay, yeah. so you're a businessman, right? You're a family man. Yes, sir. And you're an artist. Mm -hmm. What keeps you motivated to continue to grow these different aspects in your life? What's the motivation? The motivation to keep all these things growing? Mm -hmm. Man, just uh, reaching the next height, you know, reaching okay. the next level. Okay. You know, reaching the next level. What is the level? I don't really know. Okay. But it He's feel good. Keep on pushing. Yeah, it feel good. Every new accolade. I mean, yeah. shit. Every time I do something I never done before, that's an accolade to me. You know, that's oh, like, wow. boom. Okay. I just know? another another different badge. On yeah, there. yeah. It's just add yeah. them up. You know, and then you can trade experiences with people. Hey, have you done this? Yeah. That's how right. was it for you? you know what I'm saying some things are good, some things are bad. But uh, as far as the business too, you know, you want to be around people that's doing good business, so they can teach you good business. All right, my brother, let's, let's take it back to the music a little bit. All right. Um, I know you mentioned it earlier as well, but can you please talk about uh, Spooky Gang? So Spooky Gang is my underground hip-hop rap group. Okay. And uh, we had came together. We had came together to, you know, they was pretty much running an underground rap scene at the time. Okay. You know, and I came, I came home. My cousin is Milky Wayne. And, okay. um, you know, I was like, oh, damn, bro. Y'all yeah. getting busy, bro. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I can contribute to that. Okay, okay. So it's so how many people are in Spooky Gang? Uh, right now it's seven. Oh, wow. Yeah, right yeah. now it's seven. At you all from San Diego? Uh, for the majority, we all represent San Diego. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. There's some people from like other cities too yeah. that are just replants. Yeah. But for the majority, we rep San Diego. But it's, it's a not, San Diego hip hop group. Yeah, it's a San Diego hip hop group. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But we're not limited to because like Small Uno, he live in Arkansas now. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we do. Oh, he's repping over there. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We pushing boundaries for sure. You know what I mean? No doubt. Okay, yeah. respect, respect. Okay. All right, my brother. So from different articles that I read about you, and also from uh, different promo pictures that I've seen of you, and also what you're wearing now, you uh, you constantly promote um, San Diego, right? And you're always repping. Um, what does it mean to you to be an artist from San Diego? Uh, to be an artist from San Diego yeah. is to be authentic, be original. And what does it mean to represent? Like, are you proud to yeah. be representing yeah. the city? I represent the city because I'm the underdog, you know? No, it's no. unexpected, you know? And that's what it's, you think we are? San Diego are, are, un I do. are underdogs? Yeah, I do think we're the underdog, you know? No, no. I think we I think we're the underdog, especially in sports and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But I think um, the underdog always has an advantage. Yes. You know, because everybody's betting against them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Things don't always fall in line for the underdog, but the underdog always wins in the end. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And this game is about the end. Huh. You know what I mean? Respect that. I respect that. Okay, okay. All right, man. So I was fortunate to see you perform live, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you have this magnetic energy, right? And you really, really rock the crowd. So you're a true artist with uh, with an amazing stage presence mm -hmm. and also with dope music. What's the ultimate goal in your music career? In my music career? Yeah, overall. That's kind of hard because uh, obviously... We want to get the message out there, you know? We want yeah. to get the music heard. We know the music is free, though, you know? So, I mean, the message that I'm pushing is like, yo, you know, take care of yourself, man. Do what's best for you, you know what I mean? Get your slice, bro. Now, uh, do you want to reach a certain level in hip hop? Well, you know, I mean, that's like, uh, you can't really, I don't think you really do that. Okay. You know, like, oh man, like, who do you want to be like? Oh, how about this? How about game. this? How about you just do it, you yeah. do it, and you do it with love, and you do it with passion, man, and now to take it where it needs to go. You know, no obviously there's some formulas that you can fall into yeah. that are ideal, you know what I mean? But you never just, you never try to aim to be like anything, you know? You just be yourself, 
and yourself is enough, bro. No doubt. You know, okay, okay. And you're going to gravitate to those who you need to gravitate towards, you know? No, I totally understand, especially with, uh, let's say, art-wise, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I totally understand what you're saying. But, like, let's say, how about this? How about platinum status or how about Grammys? You know, how, would, oh, yeah. did you ever dream about that? Well, I mean, to dream about that is to think, like, to do it like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, sure, it's tight to get the awards, I believe, you know, you want people to, you want to be able to pop your shit, for sure. Yeah. But this ain't for no awards. I'm not doing this to say, like, hey, y'all, look at this, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's, that question is, like, a little bit subjective, you know, because okay. it's like, if I say I want to do it like this and I never achieve that, yeah. then it, am I a failure, you know? That's, like, kind of measuring myself against something. Okay, okay. And I, I don't think that that's, you know what I'm saying? I just don't do that. Fair enough, fair Cause enough. Because at the end of the day, that'll... That'll leave you let down, you know, if you never achieve that. I just think you just go out there and do it. No, you know yeah. what I mean? And whatever you do is, is good enough, bro. As long as you know in your heart you gave it your all and your 100%, bro. I respect that. I respect it's going to be received as that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, well, you know how I was just mentioning performances, right? Yeah. Um, do you have, let's say, goals as far as where you would want to perform? Like, let's say uh, Coachella or maybe yeah. even, even the San Diego uh, yeah, put Sports me on, Arena. Put me on all of them. Okay. Let's get it right. Let's get yeah. it right. Let's and that's where right. we're going to see Sham Black perform. Yeah, let's okay. get the Sham Black experience, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go out there and have a great time. Okay. Let's be safe. You know what I'm saying? Let's love one another, man. Let's 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 pick each other up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Right. Let's, let's not let each other fall down and then stomp on niggas while they down on the ground. Like, nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? We all in this together, man. We all we got, you feel me? So, That's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. okay. All right, my brother. So when it's all said and done, right, how do you want to be remembered in hip-hop? Man, I want to be remembered as just myself, man. You know, I want to be remembered as Sham Black. Okay. You know, I want to be remembered as just a... Uh, yeah, man, me. However you describe me. Whatever you think, you know, that's how I want to be remembered, bro. Like, I think, uh, you know, people come in and hip-hop and make that impact. Mm -hmm. You know, and they do what they need to do. Especially on the underground, you know. The underground is where the real love is at. That's right. You know, because that's when you really connect with people, when you really influence the people. You know, everybody loves the big screens, for mm -hmm. sure. But, you know, it's always those movies that you didn't really hear about till you heard about it. And you're like, mm -hmm. damn, that was a fucking fire-ass movie, you mm -hmm. know, with a fire-ass um, punchline to it, you know. And, that's right. and gave me some depth in it, some insight to some shit. So, I mean, that's how I want to go down as okay. when, it, when, the, when it's all said and done, man, you know. It's just the, the craft of it, yes. you know what I mean? The hustle of it, yes. you know what I mean? And uh, the business of it. Okay, okay, yeah. respect, respect. All right, man, so for the fans, so what can they uh, expect for the future? Oh, man, listen, we about to go fucking crazy, okay, okay, boy. Okay. Listen, we've been turning it up, fool. Yeah. We've been fucking turning it up, man. And uh, this next shit is about to be mind-blowing, bro. But at the moment, man, mm -hmm. we got uh, the evolution of Sham Black right go. here, um, produced by my boy Evolve Uno, okay. you know, and uh, we got yeah, physical dope copies of these. Yeah, thank yeah. you kindly. It's a little five-piece, and uh, this is really me just, you know, I'm going through the phases and kind of just, you know, recollecting it all okay. and translating it all and um, appreciating it all, you know, the ups about. and the downs, you know, and the gray areas where you're like, yo, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because this shit happens. Yeah. No, you know what sure. I mean? And you have to be, I think the more mindful you are, you are of it, you know what I mean? the more the better you can deal with it. It's like, yes. oh, man, this is the and what And you the acknowledge fire. it, yeah. and, and also, like, you acknowledge what you're going through, but also fix it at the same time, and yeah. also push through it. Yeah, yeah, and push yeah. through and keep going, bro, because you don't have to just sit, you don't have to acknowledge it and then just sit in the shit, you know? You can sit in the shit, you just gotta figure out a solution. Yeah, that's So right. you gotta get up and get through it, you know what I mean? And I think at a lot of stages in our lives, man, when you listen to the music, you're like, yo, okay, I felt that, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm talking about, you know, Humpty Dumpty falling off the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Fucking this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, no, no. if you ain't never been Humpty Dumpty, then yeah. you don't know what I'm talking about. You respect, know, respect, respect, and uh, respect the the struggle, acknowledge it, but also um, yeah, because like through it as Humpty well. Dumpty, they say you know Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. That's yeah, right. he had a great fall. He was never the same again, bro. That's the right. food was fucked up. You know, yeah. you ever cracked the eggshell? <laughs> it's like can't put that shit back together. No, you no, know, no, it's no, super. No. It's fucked up, but you know it can be put back together. It just won't no. be the same. So, uh, you got any new music coming, like in 2022? Man, listen, you yeah. gotta stay tuned. We got a lot. You got any dates? Of, we got a lot of good stuff. Nah, you see, 
when you start giving people dates, hard dates, yeah, people yeah. start expecting too yeah. much. You know what I mean? And it's like, bro, it might not be ready by then. Okay. You know? I'll give myself a hard date, but I won't. You don't want to let tell that somebody out. like, okay, this is the date that this is gonna happen. Because what if it don't happen? What if I die before then? Or you okay. know what I'm saying? Fair enough, like, fair nigga enough. might get fucking. Whatever, you know, yeah, something. Lord forbid yeah. it don't you happen. You might fall off the wall like Humpty Dumpty, Man, right? listen, yeah, bro. And then it's yeah. like, oh, damn, this fool told us it was this day, yeah. you know? Um, like, relax, relax. It's coming, right? But right, we well, do how, got some how, good shit coming, though. Well, how about this? Okay, since um, we won't leave the fans anticipating, right, too much, um, and they can also connect with you, how can they reach you? Or uh, can you shout out your social media? Yeah, you can find me on all streaming platforms at Sham Black. Okay. That's S-H-A-M-B-L-A-K. I'm saying it's eight letters. Um, eight, if you look at the number, it's no right. corners in eight, man. So, you know, just, it's infinite, you know? Okay, and what about Instagram? And every, so everything's all Sham Black? Oh, Instagram, yeah, it's all Sham Black, but on Instagram it's S H A M okay. underscore B L A K. Okay, fair enough. And then, uh, and that's where they can hit you up? Yep, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that. It's all, right, all right. Sham Black. Yep. All right, my brother. So, um, do you have any shout outs? Yeah, man. Shout out to the Spooky Gang. There you go. Shout out to all my Spookies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to G Money, shout out to Big Hook, you know, holding me down, pushing me through the struggle. You know, shout out to the fans, man, and everybody tuning in, you know, getting to the business, man. Shout out to you, bro. Thank you, my brother. For keeping Thank it, you. for keeping it, you I'm know what I'm saying, yeah. keeping it thorough and uh, through and through, man. You know, this is, I, I appreciate you, bro. Hi, right, my brother. Well, it was, uh, it was an honor to interview a fellow NCO. Type uh, shit. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. let's, let's cheers. Thank you again, my brother. Cheers. Right, my brother. Yeah.